Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Lovely to see you here. Um, I'm not the most uh, systematic person, so I'm just relieved to actually get to this stage um, with everything that needs to be done, put out of chairs and everybody comes in and helps and all the rest of it, to remember most things, to get us to this stage is really helpful. So I, more than anyone, perhaps need to calm myself uh, as we come into our worship together. But before we go there, uh, I'm going to mention some of the notices. You should, if they're being done every uh, two weeks by, by Alison, so it's the same sheet as last week. Um, last week, I didn't mention the 50-500 distribution. We're looking for some more volunteers there to allow us to go out uh, in, in pairs. Um, if you remember, the 500 are still many years away, but the 50 houses are beginning to open up. Um, and this is a lovely idea. It's a little bag with some gifts for the household that introduce themselves, to, introduce them to the village and also to the church. Um, the, the high spot for me is that one of our scripture union books, Diary of a Disciple, is in there for the children. If you've never seen it, it's really good for the grandchildren or the children. It's the, uh, it's the Gospel of Luke told in a really uh, modern way. So if you'd like to, to volunteer for that, uh, then please come and uh, speak to me. The other thing I'd like to mention is um, we've got a book, as usual, for Lent. Uh, John and I uh, had a look at this book, and I must say, and I'm not easily impressed, I was really impressed with this book, reading the first few chapters, so it's free to download. So if you would like one, and we'd encourage everyone to, it's Daily Readings Through Lent. It goes through um, its meditations in the words of Jesus from the Gospel of John. And uh, one of the pastors of a, a big church, Cornerstone Church in Liverpool, says this. By the time I had finished this book, I felt that I had been on a journey with Adam, that's the author, and Charles Spurgeon. Because each, each day had an, a very well-chosen excerpt from Spurgeon's uh, sermons. If you don't know who Spurgeon is, read the book and you'll find out. Uh, and the Apostle John, more importantly. With all of them saying to me each day, Look at what Jesus said here. Isn't he amazing? It's a lovely devotional book. There's a pile of them over there. If they run out, there's more in the box. If we really run out, we can grab my copy and I'll get another one. But I really recommend it. And if we're all reading through um, on the same day, then it can be perhaps part of our conversation um, at the end of uh, church each Sunday. And I think it's two weeks till then, until um, mm -hmm. Monday not Monday, um, sure what's it called Tuesday. again? Short Tuesday. Short Tuesday. So I think it'll be this Sunday, next Sunday, then Short Tuesday. Tuesday. So mm -hmm. get, get, them, get them quickly. And then finally, just a, a heads up that on the 25th of February uh, will be our prayer meeting here as normal. And I will be leaving it. Uh, it's still a little bit ahead of John coming back. So uh, please put that in your diaries. 9 a.m. 25th, and we'll probably huddle in there where opening the doors makes it, makes it a little bit warmer. Okay, let's come to the, to the Lord in the book of Psalms. Psalm 100 has a bit, has a, um, has a real affinity for a Scot. We sing in, in the sort of tradition I was brought up in, the old 100, and the metrical version of this psalm is sung so much. Um, and so it touches me in a special way, but it's written to touch all of us. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you 
that regardless of what we've been doing this week, whether we're feeling on the mountaintop or we're feeling in the depths of despair and loneliness, we can come to you knowing that you are the faithful one, that you continue through all eight generations, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We come knowing that we are your sheep, dumb things that without their shepherd run off the cliff. And we thank you that you gather us in as the good shepherd and that we can know you and know that you are Lord and God. And so we come intentionally joyful, intentionally joyful as we sing your worship in our hearts, with our lips, with our minds, and as we go from here with our hands, because it's the only response that you deserve. So we're going to worship with a wonderful song, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Ones, in light, inaccessible, hid from our eyes, most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we pray. I moaned this morning. I moaned about my son's packing of the car for us to go on holiday. We're going on holiday after this. I moaned at him, and it's totally unreasonable that I moaned at him. I'm sorry, Nathaniel, because he's very good at packing the car. But he was putting something in the wrong place. I'm sure of it. <laughs> we 
moan, don't we? It's, it's a thing that we do, isn't it? It's just something that we do. We moan. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. Um, I'm going to tell you a story uh, from Exodus 17 about the people who had a good moan. Here they are. It's about the Israelites. God had rescued his people from Pharaoh and all the gods of Egypt. He would rescued them. You can come down in a minute. I've got something for you to do in a moment. God had rescued his people from Pharaoh and all the gods of Egypt. And they were travelling away, literally following God in the cloud and following uh, by day. That's right, the cloud by day and fire by night. They were following God in the desert. They came to a place called Rephidim. Now, Bible, Bible names are not names that we use very often, so you can all repeat that. One, two, three, Rephidim. Rephidim, there we go, got that in our heads. Came to a place called Rephidim, and they make camp, and they go and get their water carriers. Now, I've got my water carrier here. Now, could you come down and help me? Could you come down and help me? Thank you. What I want you to do is I want you to open this and tip it all over the floor. Okay, can you open that? I'll do it. I'll put that back in. <laughs> you want to do? You want to open that tip all over the floor? I need to. Gotta be careful. You have to take that one. There's two lids. It's just amazing, isn't it? Keep going, keep going, keep going. Tip it all over the floor, please. Tip it over the floor. There you go. There you go. That, you see, that was the problem, you see. When they got to Rephidim, when they got to Rephidim, there was nothing in it. And what did they do, do you think? What did you think? There's no water. Okay. They had a good moan. <laughs> they had a very good moan. I'm going to put that back down. I'm going to, I'm going to, you're going to throw it off on me. You're going to put that down. <laughs> oh, yes. They had a really good moan. So let's have some grumpy faces. Grumpy faces. They're very good grumpy faces. <laughs> do they ever do that at home? <laughs> <laughs> well, you go sit down. You go sit down. You're going to call me to <laughs> They had a really good moan and they declared to Moses, Give us water to drink. Moses was leading them through the desert with the Lord. Okay? And then later they said, Why did you, Moses, bring us out of Egypt and make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Why did you, Moses, bring us out of Egypt and make us die of thirst? Now, what had they forgotten? Anyone ideas what they'd forgotten? So they're... They were saved by God in Egypt. Any ideas what they forgot? They forgot something really important. Who brought them out of Egypt? Who did? Anyone can answer him. This is okay. God brought them out of Egypt. Who was right there in Rephidim, in a big cloud during the day? Who was right there in the room while they were moaning? In, actually there. Who was there? God. God was there. He was in the room. They had all that evidence of the rescue from Egypt, that God was right there in their, to, to, to care for them, and yet they had a really good man. They preferred Egypt to the promise of God. So what does God do with their unfaithfulness? What does he do? He remains faithful, actually. <laughs> He remains faithful. He takes a staff. I wish I'd brought one. I didn't mean to actually. He takes a staff. He hits a rock. Moses does, under God's instruction. And out of that rock pours water as well. And then God gets a name, which we're going to find in our psalm. The, the adults here are going to be. God gets a name. He gets the name of the rock of salvation. He rescues them from thirst in the desert, despite their moaning. That rock rescue, that rock rescue, is actually not dissimilar for us, is it? This is what Jesus said. Whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I <laughs> give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So, you'll never empty. We're going to pray for the children of the again. We're going to pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much for the joy and filling and life that Jesus brings us. Thank you that you are our rock of rescue. You are so good, our Father in heaven, in bringing us Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
as a, as a children, yeah, let's stand and sing together. When I was lost, you came and rescued me. Psalm 95, which is on page 602 in the Church Bible. 
Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea <coughs> is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as you did in Meribah, as you did that day at Massa in the desert, where your fathers tested and tried me, though they had, had seen what I did. For 40 years I was angry with that generation. I said, they are the people whose hearts go astray, and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my way. Let's uh, turn to the Lord in prayer. Let's uh, glorify the Lord in our prayer, and then also bring our prayers for others. Heavenly Father, we come before you, praising you, thanking you, Lord, for all your blessings. You are Almighty, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. If we have eyes to see, we see your glory all around in the sun, the moon, the oceans, on all the earth. We pray that we will never take your love and blessings for granted, that each day as we bow down and worship you, we will never forget the privilege of coming to you in prayer, bought with his own blood by our Lord Jesus Christ. You are our shelter in times of need. You are our strength, our rock. Thank you that you are always there, forgiving us, loving us. We pray that we can be a faithful servant and listen to your Holy Spirit to guide us as your sheep, that we will hear your voice. You are God. We love you with all our heart. So, my dear loving God, forgive us when we failed you in thought or word or deed. At this time, uh, when so many of our friends and neighbours and, and fellowship need to see more of you in us. Forgive us when we've thought of ourselves first or been tempted to turn inwards in selfish self-regard. When we have not dared to love our neighbours as ourselves. And we make confession for our society, Lord. A society where more and more it seems like those days of judges when every man does as he thinks fit. A society that so readily ignores you, even scorns you and mocks you, and in all too human arrogance thinks they're in control of your creation. Humble us, Lord, as a society we pray. Let this tragedy <clears throat> that is all around us, from COVID to global war, breaking out in our in, in Europe. Help us to be your salt and your light. And Lord, move by your spirit to bring our society back to you. In your mercy, forgive what we have been and help us to amend what we are so that we might be more like you in the future. For we thank you for all that you have given us. In your Son, who readily lived and died and rose again for each one of us. For the love of others around us, friends, family, and fellowship. And for each other, for that sense of deep fellowship that can span even, even the coldness uh, of, of our morning uh, and the remoteness when during the week we are distant from each other. And so, dear Lord, we come in confidence to you with our prayers for others, for you are good and your love endures forever. We pray for the anxious and fearful in our fellowship this morning. 
and lift up those brought low, that they might know the ultimate comfort of knowing that nothing can ever separate us from your love. We pray that you would give us strength to love and serve our neighbours as if we were caring for you, comforting the fearful, tending the sick, and assuring the isolated that you are a God of love. We pray for our youngsters, Lord. We thank you that even when they're few in number, when they come here, they bring life and vitality to our fellowship. And we pray that even now up the stairs and wherever our young folk and children are, that at this most influential stage in their life, when they face perhaps huge uncertainties and challenges, that you would be shaping them through us and through your Holy Spirit. For the school children, the students, those who are seeking to start out on careers and build their future, help them, Lord, we pray. We entrust to your care those who are ill or in pain this morning. There's so many in our fellowship who are struggling with pain and with illness. We pray especially for Ruth Register, who last week took that little turn. We thank you that you have brought her back in many ways and our family are gathering around her. We miss her this morning and we pray that you will be with her even now, that she will know our prayers and she will know you present. And for all those who are grieving and lonely, Lord, we pray. We especially think of Anne, but we know of others in our fellowship who still have a hole where a loved one used to be. And we pray that in their grief, they will know that you are the friend of Lazarus, that you are the one who raised him, raised Lazarus from the dead and was raised by God from the dead as the first fruit of the raising of all the saints to be with you in that time to come. Lord, we pray for all the places around the world which are in turmoil at the moment. We're sorry that so often the ones that come to mind are the ones that are on our TV screen. <laughs> we pray for the Ukraine, for Ukraine. We pray for Turkey and Syria. We pray for so many other places where your fallen world's problems have been, have been exacerbated by man's failing to care. And we pray, Lord, that in our way, even here, again, we would bring your kingdom on earth as it is to have in heaven. We pray for John and Philly. We pray that at this time they will continue to know you and be tended by you as they seek spiritual refreshment and that you would bring them safely and refreshed back to us soon. Lord, to you be the glory. The one who, as Moses prayed, has been your people's dwelling place through all generations. Your love is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever the circumstances or context within which we, your people, dwell. Satisfy us this morning with your unfailing love, we pray. That we might continue to sing for joy and be glad in all our days. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> so before we come to think on the psalm of we're going to sing again uh, two songs. Come let us worship the King of Kings, the faithful one, Psalm of Jesus. Let's, let's sing. <laughs> 